games. So, you know, nothing is better than I feel like basketball because it's all very close. Like you're very close to the floor. You can see who everybody is. It's not like football where you have helmets and, and you're further away. Basketball is, is played on a stage. <laughs> I think they embrace it. Uh, I think they, they like to be at home. I think they like to perform in front of uh, the crowd that uh, Skidmore and the culture has built as far as the young kids, um, the students, and uh, just everybody who comes to support. So I think they really enjoy it. Um, I think they're comfortable here, and I think they like to perform for uh, the fans. I think the, the, the fan support and the atmosphere is a huge part of having a successful program. Uh, when I came here uh, seven years ago, that was a goal of mine, was to raise awareness not only to the community, campus community, but to the Saratoga community. And I think we've done a great job of that. Uh, in return, I think our players feed off it. It becomes an, ex an exciting atmosphere, and it's also a place there when recruits come and visit, they see this kind of atmosphere, and it's always something that players want to play in. So uh, everyone kind of enjoys it. I love having fans out of the game. I think it creates a pretty cool environment. Um, you know, it, it, that energy kind of feeds on the court, and uh, I think it definitely helps us play a little bit better. I feel included, energized, um, a part of the community. I just feel uh, it's more of like, I don't know, I get very competitive as if it, if it were me playing on the, on the court. No one wants to play in front of an empty crowd. Right? We practice in front of nobody. Um, but the ability to play in front of fans with signs, cheering, a shot goes in, or a good play is made and the fans you know, erupt on your behalf is always a positive effect. I think they embrace it. Uh, I think they, they like to be at home. I think they like to perform in front of uh, the crowd that uh, Skidmore and the culture has built as far as the young kids, um, the students, and uh, just everybody who comes to support. So I think they really enjoy it. Um, I think they're comfortable here, and I think they like to perform for uh, the fans. Obviously, since you're home, uh, whenever you're hitting, hitting the shot, getting a defensive stop, uh, just not only is your team behind you, the crowd's behind you as well, and that just can carry your momentum just that much farther at a home game. I feel like I want to be on the court sometimes, you know, when I'm watching you guys, and uh, it's really fun. I mean, you got your friends around you, you're all cheering together, starting chants. Um, jumping up and down, yelling on the court, uh, just trying to be as supportive as you can. So it's, it's exciting. And I know what it's like to uh, play in front of a crowd and you know not have the crowd to play in front of. So you know I like to support my fellow athletes and uh, you know give them some kind of motivation. Fans just kind of give you like a, an extra boost of energy, especially late in the game when you know you need support and you gotta just you know kind of feel that somebody's standing behind you and yeah. Uh, Especially home fans at Skidmore do a really great job, you know, probably the best I've ever seen uh, in Division III. And part of having success and having great crowds at home, and that allows you to understand what it's like to deal with on the road. Um, there's some things you have to do, some things you have to be ready for, some adjustments you have to make. But that being said, our guys have always embraced being on the road. We've been able to win a couple championships on the road. Guys, I think when we're on the road, we know that it's just us that we have to kind of feed off each other's energy on the bench. And it's kind of, you know, us 15 guys against everybody else in the building. So I think it's pretty cool. But, um, you know, obviously fans can, can our big momentum swings when, when the other team hits a shot or something, uh, they get really riled up. Uh, I think on the road, the challenge is you got to try and keep it simple. We, you know, we've, we're a good program, so when we go on the road, generally we draw big crowds because teams are always gunning for us. So 
Uh, my goal as a coach, every time we go in there from a game plan standpoint, is to try and keep the game simple and keep the guys comfortable. Uh, if we're comfortable with what we're doing, then I can be less involved because it's harder for me to be involved when the crowd's so loud. Uh, the players got to kind of got to take over, and when the game plan is simpler, I think that's easier to do. Um, and a lot of it really has to do with experience, um, playing level, talent, the amount of times that people have played. If it's a place that we've played at before, so it's a, there's a level of familiarity, then our players are going to be fine. If it's a crowd that we're not used to, a, a level of noise against us that we're not used to, we're certainly going to have some players that struggle a little bit. We always talk about the challenge of going on the road and winning. As fun as it is winning on your home court in front of your home fans, there's something to be said for going on somebody else's court, winning a game in front of a big crowd. I think that that is where we're going to see a little bit more variance, um, so to speak, where some players will feed off of that because they're, they kind of want to show the opposing team, the opposing fans, that we're good no matter what. Um, and other players don't necessarily play that well under what I would call those pressures. You got, I think you got to block them out a little bit when the game goes on. Uh, and I think home and away. I think, again, I, I think if the people that aren't used to it can be affected by it on the road. I think if you come into your own arena, you embrace what you have. It's great. It's exciting. But you can't get yourself too worked up. And if you're able to manage that at home and kind of stay within yourself, then it makes, your, makes it easier to do when you're on the road when the crowd's not supporting you. Uh, so if you can just keep it in between the lines, it's, I think it's to your advantage. My energy brings energy, and so that affects other people in the audience. And when everyone, like they see me, some people get discouraged and they're like, oh man, we're, we're about to lose. But I constantly think, no, we can definitely do this because I think of strategies of how we can um, think of, of ways like, okay, we need, let's say, three pointers, or we need to continue to go to the um, basket. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like the sixth man out there, you know? Um, it's great. I mean, you can see the momentum change from side to side and, uh, you know, <clears throat> when we're all together and, we're, you know, we're really cheering you guys on and you guys start getting on a roll, absolutely, I feel like we have a, we have a uh, you know, a say in that. I think fans have a huge effect on the game. I think the energy or, or momentum of a game can change after even a big dunk where you're at a home and, and the fans get into it. I, I think they could absolutely distract free throws. I think we've seen some of that here. Uh, you know, they'll do anything to just try to break your attention. Um, you know, I, yeah, I kind of block it out myself. I've learned to do that over the years. You know, people will tell me uh, my family supports the game immensely, and my kids get upset when they hear people yell from the crowd at me. But I never hear any of it, to be honest with you, unless it's someone that's directly right behind me. I'm kind of locked in as to what my guys are doing, what our bench is doing, and how engaged we are. I mean, most of the time when we play games, we're across from fans. So we, we really can't hear them that much. And I mean, we're playing, when they're playing music during a timeout, I don't even hear the music in the timeout that's being played over the PA system because I'm, I'm so honed in and focused on what's going on. To not listen to what fans are saying, I, you know, I, I want to uh, you know, stay composed and, uh, and coach my guys and, and just stay you know, super engaged on what's going on on the court. Um, so I, you know, in my young career, I don't have anything uh, to really, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't remember uh, per se anybody, you know, calling me out of my name or you know whatever it may be. Well, last year I had a man bun, whatever you want to call it, like a little hairstyle thing. So <laughs> fans uh, try to come at me and you know call me out with. Uh, with what kind of hairstyle do you have and stuff like that. This past season, I uh, dyed my hair blonde halfway through the year. So I got a couple of Chris Brown statements and stuff like that. So, I mean, obviously I was expecting it, but th those were good and they were in my ear the whole game. Who's what kind of socks are those? Like, what are your leggings? Uh, you look like a clown type of thing. So, I mean, I hope that um, it's not just happening to me. It's the typical, like, you suck or you know, say if I shoot an air ball, which I've shot him before, they'll, they'll just keep chaining the air ball when I touch the ball, or, um, or just trying to distract me yelling or, or saying like, oh, you're not an old American, like this and that. So I typically um, yell, like when it's quiet and they're throwing um, a free throw, I yell um, a dish, like a food, like I, I would yell like chicken parmesan or um, chicken alfredo. Because I know like you guys are hungry mostly. I'm <laughs> like either you're hungry, stressed, tired, and so I'll be like, 
chicken parmesan, and they'll miss it. We came up with it my, my sophomore year. We decided to get cardboard cutouts of, uh, of Taylor Swift and Kanye West, and they had that VMA, uh, you know, that blow up, so it was relevant at the time. And then we had, we had a couple of really good distractions. So I think the guy went over two, and then he went over four. So we ended up coming back the next week for the Liberty League Championships with about like six more signs. We had like, I mean, Bob Saget was in there. We had, we had some Mr. Bean. So we had a lot of other people going down. And I feel like when we brought that back this year, it was pretty cool. I mean, it costs like 30 bucks to make one of these signs down at the center. Like we go, it's $10 to get the board, and then another like 15 to 20 to get the prints done. And then the glue is another three bucks. So we're looking at like a $30 investment for one of these bad boys, but we do it with pride. Uh, you know, usually we, you know, we target one player at a time kind of thing. Uh, make, maybe make fun of his weight or uh, his, his uh, weight or his height, you know. Uh, you know, some guys like to swear. Some guys like to uh, do some research on Facebook with girlfriends or, or moms or anything like that, which isn't my tactic. I'm more of a... Uh, just keep on yelling at the guy, keep on reminding him, hey, you made that air ball, remember two plays ago? Or He called one of the centers for St. Lawrence, double chicken. He was a little heavy, so he took that to heart. He was smiling on the free throw line. So that happened. Uh, we love throwing out the Bilbo Baggins references for, uh, for smaller, shorter players. They like it too. And if you look old, we'll tell you you look old. If you're losing your hair, we'll call you Rogaine. We'll do just about anything. Personal attacks are a lot different than just appearance and looks and everything like that. Um, if, if you're using too much expletives, too many expletives, uh, it could be inappropriate. I think it's definitely uh, not right, but at the same time, it's college basketball. No one is gonna tell the Camry crazies at Duke to shut up or to, to not say certain things. And I feel like more leeway needs to be granted to the fans here. You know, I know what it can be like when a fan takes it too far, so I respect the game enough uh, to not do that. But, you know, I got plenty of friends who do. And I know plenty of people that do, and uh, you know it's usually when they start swearing or, or, or you know they're cursing out some somebody, uh, just saying inappropriate stuff. Um, you know, it disrespects the game, it disrespects you know your representation of our school. So I feel like there's there's a possibility of taking it too far when uh, things can get you know a little too personal, or uh, you know the fans kind of do their research and then might you know say things that actually uh, might hurt somebody's feelings. So, you know, that's always a possibility, but I don't feel like at least Skidmore fans have ever done that. I don't think here at Skidmore I've ever heard anyone take it too far. I have heard, uh, oh, like being at an away gym or being at a tournament where fans take it too far, even if it's not a student, it could be a parent or just a spectator. But. Um, I think fans could definitely take it too far, um, whether it has to do with um, like what the person looks like. I think at times, I think there's always, uh, every once in a while, you'll have a situation uh, where you have you know, one, one bad seed, as they say, uh, and I think that can ruin it for the rest of the group. I think for the most part, the, you know, the, the fans are passionate and they just want their, home, their team to win and they're rooting as hard as they can. Sometimes they don't know what to say. Uh, and, and, and you know, some people it, it's they just get caught up in the moment and they don't realize the magnitude of, of how it can affect an individual. But that's a part of you know being a fan. Um, I think fans are you know extremely loving and caring for you know whoever the team is that they're rooting for. And you know it, it, at the end of the day, it does play an advantage if a fan can get into you know a ref's ear or you know an opposing player's ear. So I do think there is you know uh, going too far. Um, but if you can do it in a respectful, passionate, um, you know, way, then I think that, you know, it's okay.